Okay, hey, welcome. Uh, I think this is going up on YouTube, so it's been a while. Hi. So I made these shish kebabs, uh, and I was really, really happy. I was pleased that I sold them. I think they turned out well. Uh, it was a bit of a process getting the tooling down. But anywho, I got about a spare kidney's worth of stainless steel the other day. So I'm going to start off degreasing those, and I'll basically going to just whisk you through the process. I've got a bucket and some other stuff. Uh, and periodically, while we're waiting for stuff to cool, I'll share with you some other stuff that's been going on in the shop. But let's do it. So I was going to share with you guys a bit about why I'm degreasing these, because that isn't something that I normally do. But basically, wherever it got hot but not quite forging temperature, the steel discolored as the oil burned off the protective film that they put on it. And I couldn't quite get all of that color to go away, like they were food safe and everything, I'm sure. But, uh, oh, some great lighting. Uh, yeah, so let me show you what we're doing here. So there's my 90 feet of stainless. I have some hot water, a rag, and some degreaser. And I'm just gonna go up and down them. And then I think I'm gonna use some acetone on them. I figured it'd be easy to, easier to do it while they're still in one big length, but this stuff is super goopy. But uh, it is what it is. We'll see how it goes. It is dripping hot out here, but I have all of it done over there, which is really boring. I assure you we'll, we'll be forging at some point, but it's very important. I'm hoping that since I haven't baked it on yet, that'll be the end of it but we will find out in the morning. Whoosh. Good morning. So, uh, get you caught up on what we have. I have all my pieces here. Cut them off with the angle grinder. It was probably gonna be the fastest uh, from the options that I had. Didn't really want to snap them. I have my forge hot, and I have this bar sticking off to the side. That's so I can put them in at an angle, so hopefully they stay cooler and I can hold on to them. But let's get to forging. So basically, we need to forge 120 tapers. Uh, there'll be one on each end. These guys just get a nice little skewer point. And then once we're done with that, we'll flip them around. We'll do the other end, which is going to be the fishtails for the scrolls. So as it cools down, I kind of work on the finer details. Move more material while it's hot. Want to make sure it stayed pretty straight. Part of the reason I knocked the corners off is to keep the dimension uh, not exceeding the bar stock. That way I can lay it flat and get it straight. But I've got a full bucket and an empty bucket. Let's get to it. So after you get into a bit of a rhythm, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I want to make sure it's square, corner, 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 face, face, corner, corner. Done. Uh, control the heat to keep it from going out of straight. Well, my phone rudely decided that it was too hot to continue functioning. <laughs> but uh, we've both cooled down now a little. You can see what we've got here. So we've got 60 tapers. They're all pretty clean. Uh, so I'm ready to flip them around. And I'm going to do a fishtail scroll on the other side. That's what the other taper is. So these two lines are the minimum and maximum uh, parameters for how long it should be. As noted in my instructions, always write instructions if you want to repeat something because I don't actually have the originals anymore to reference even if I wanted to. So that'll be next. Okay. So the system on these is to flatten it, we knock those square corners that develop off, flatten the end, work back to our stopping point, and then smooth the transition between them. We toss it right back in the fire so it can get nice and hot while we're working on the rest. I do about four at a time and I can keep up with them. And then when you do the scroll, start with the tip, roll over, and pull it towards me. This is actually a very hard one to do, so it's important that you keep your, your hammer square and everything, because you aren't really going to have much of a chance to try again. And on that 
So now with our little scrolls done, uh, we get to move on to a couple jigged portions, which I tied them and marked them according to their identification in my instructions so that they don't go anywhere and I know exactly which ones they are because I make a lot of jigs and if I didn't have a way of keeping track of them, that would be a problem very quickly. So I'll show you what we're doing here first. So basically, we have our pipe that's the size of like the inside diameter of our hoop on the end, and then we have this stop. And we can use that to orient it properly with the scroll. We have that bit of a flat area we can register against there. I'm gonna shoop, wrap it around, and then we'll bring that in a little tighter uh, once the rest of it's around. Not so that it touches, but so it's a little closer. It'll make sense when you see it. Then, because we want that to be in line with the shaft, we're going to end up pulling it out, and we'll do a little bit of that with the torch. So went ahead and did a couple just to get in the rhythm, but basically if your heat's controlled right, you can just bring it around like that, and I can work that scroll bit in on its own, and unless it's wildly out of line, that's that. Instruction said we want about an eighth inch gap, so that's what I'm going to leave. Alright, there's all 60 done. That is a job that when I start I could probably fall over dead before I stopped. I was able to keep four at a time going in there, uh, and then typically the last thing that I will do before I put a jig away uh, is to spray some sealer on it. That way it stays good for the next one because every time you use it, it burns the oil or whatever you put on off. So I always reapply. It's hot. So the next part is to put that bit of reverse bend in. So. How many times can I say so? Let's see. Instructions say put the little scroll about a quarter inch from the jaw of the vise. We'll light off the torch. I'm going to use some offset scroll tongs or 90 degree scroll tongs. Okay, so I kind of want it to curve along the flat part uh, from where it came off the jig, or the straight portion, I should say. And I can adjust anything I need to with the torch. This is the last step before we put our decorative fuller marks in. Okay, last one. Take some time to get a rhythm. If I turn my flame way down, I'm going to just start the curve looking for one big fluid line. Uh, I want the center of that to be in line with the shaft, more or less like that. Compress it straight, knock that over in line, pretty much just like that.
Okay, so with all of our little hoops done, uh, we are now going to move on to the next part, which is putting in all the little decorative fuller lines, which I do with this tool right here and my power hammer. This is made of... Oh, look. I marked it so that I would know if I ever had to reheat treat it. Uh, 1095 and 5160. So I have my original, which I did out of mild steel. I pulled it out of my scrap bin to show you. The stainless gets cold very fast and flattened it, so I had to make this one. But I'm going to slap it on my power hammer and we'll give it a go. My fan died. Ugh. I'm glad this isn't a fashion show. Uh, I have all 60 of these done. With the little indentations there. I was hoping to have them all done tonight, but I had to run off and help someone. So I'll probably be wire wheeling and cleaning these tomorrow. It's getting pretty late. And I have paperwork to do before I go to bed. I love it. Ah. Uh, long hot day but almost there very happy with the progress Okay, I have all of them wire wheeled. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna give them another wipe with the acetone because the wheel leaves uh, some residue on there, as well as my hands if I've touched literally anything in my shop. So I'll do that and give them a scrub and catch back up with you guys. It's a bouquet! Okay. But, uh, no. <laughs> I 
I hope you guys enjoyed or found it interesting. I certainly learned a few things. The acetone really helped speed the cleaning process along. Last time it was about 36.9% of the total time, which I don't think it was a whole lot less than that this time, but it was definitely a lot easier. But anywho, if you guys have a project that I make that you want to see done from bar stock to finished product, feel free to comment below. I'd love if you subscribed. If you liked the video, like the video, share with someone else who might. Uh, yep, that's all. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Yeah, I definitely wrote 36.9 on my hand because I knew that I would forget when I was in front of the camera. <laughs> so I went ahead and did a couple just to get in the rhythm. Y'all are in the way. Last one. So, this is my gas forge that I use uh, anytime that I'm doing multiples of something. So, it's a four by eight ribbon burner. So it keeps a couple cubic heat Wow, cubic feet hot. Uh, it has forced air coming from the fan, mixes with the gas in there with some stuff I put in. It has a baffle plate, blah, blah, blah. A lot of heat and a lot of gas. I probably did not use more than about four inches. I don't think anything stuck in past the end of the doorway more than like that much. <laughs> I have enough scraps to make a smaller one and I really need to, it's embarrassing. That is quite the waste, but still way cheaper than doing it one at a time. <laughs>